Mino Jijijeb, as the Ojibwe or Anishinaabe say, good morning. It's a good morning. Bienvenue à tous. Thank you, Elder Gary Sue, for that inspiring opening ceremony. I'm Gaetan Verna, the director of the Powerplant Contemporary Art Gallery, and I welcome you to the 2017 Creative Time Summit of Homeland and Revolution. Whether you've come from near or far, whether you are a speaker or an audience member, welcome, bienvenue. The Power Plant Contemporary Art Gallery is Canada's leading non-collecting public art gallery, sorry, dedicated exclusively to the work of Canadian artists from around, and artists from the globe. If you've attended yesterday's launch party, yesterday evening, you get a sense of the variety of our projects. This fall, as we feature a drawing installation by Michael Landy from the UK, a sculpture by Amalia Pica, originally from Argentina, and living between the UK and Mexico, photography by and film by Congolese photographer Sami Baloji, who together with Belgium anthropologist Philippe de Burg have shown us the reality of Kinshasa. This global range was at the core of the power plant when it was founded 30 years ago in May 1987. Similarly, for 40 years, Creative Time has been commissioning and presenting ambitious public art project with thousands of artists throughout New York City, across, across the country, and around the world. All right. And nine years ago, they began organizing annual summits, exploring the intersections of contemporary art practice and social justice. The two organizations have parallel missions, so it felt really natural when the power plant had the opportunity to send a group of staff and 10 artists from across Canada to attend the Creative Time Summit, the curriculum at the Venice Biennale of 2015. A few months later, during a wrap-up telephone conversation with Creative Time staff, which transformed into a brainstorming session, we spoke of recent election of the Liberal government in Canada. At that time, looking forward to 2017, Prime Minister Trudeau spoke of celebration of the 150th anniversary of Confederation and reconciliation with Canada's First Nation. But these two are not necessarily compatible. While some celebrate Confederation, we realize that it's a problematic laden with dark legacies with respect to the indigenous people from coast to coast to coast. Indigenous people of Canada inhabited and cared for the land for generations. They had developed rich culture and complex system, but with the arrival of European colonizers, the First Nation were decimated, subjugated, marginalized, made invisible. Sadly, similar abuses occur elsewhere with similar dark legacies, which have yet to be reconciled and are happening right now, today, at the same time. This kick-started our collaboration on a summit in Toronto. And so I extend thanks personally from my colleagues and the board of directors of the Power Plant to Creative Time. My sincere thanks go to Nato Thompson, artistic director, and Sally Swede, director of Creative Time Summit. I feel privileged to have worked with them along with Josh Human, the Power Plant's curator of education and public program, to shape this summit. This is Two, this is a too overwhelming adventure for just four people, and we owe our gratitude to staff members and interns at Creative Time and the Power Plant who have schemed to attend to details large and small. And as planning progressed, the Art Gallery of Ontario enthusiastically joined this collaboration by agreeing to host breakout sessions tomorrow, some featuring today's presenters, most led by artists, I'm getting there, and activists from the greater Toronto area. I especially thank Sean O'Neill, the AGO Directors of Public Program and Cultural Partnership, and his colleagues. With that, I'm pleased to pass on the baton to Nato Thompson. Thank you very much. Have a great summit.